Hello, my name is Atif Darwish, professor of OBGYN in Oxford University, Egypt. Today I'd like to discuss with you an important uh, issue related to a uh, commonly seen disease, which is endometriosis. Whatever may be the theory explaining the occurrence of endometriosis, all of us know that there is no universally accepted theory uh, that may explain the all cases of endometriosis, and that's why this disease is still known as an enigmatic disease of medicine. But if you see endometriosis by laparoscopy, you will see that this disease is associated with inflammation and defective vasculature in addition to defective innervation, and these can be proved by immunohistochemical studies and histopathologic studies of the endometriotic uh, lesions. Regarding defective innervation, there is an imbalanced sympathetic and sensory innervation uh, of the tissues uh, that are destroyed or affected by endometriosis. And there is Definitely, there is an inflammatory reaction in cases of endometriosis, and this inflammatory response is responsible for the endothelial dysfunction and might even lead to carcinogenesis later on. The biomolecular changes associated with endometriosis include impaired immune system response, increased cytokines and pro-inflammatory mediators, increased angiogenic activity, increased estrogen production, and progesterone resistance in cases of endometriosis. We should know that angiogenesis is different from vasculogenesis. Angiogenesis means that there is a blood vessel present in the endometrium, for example, or in the ovary, and this blood vessel increases the branching of its main stem and become more branched like a leash of blood vessels and these new blood vessels developed on top of the pre-existing blood vessel are called angiogenesis and this is what occurs in malignancy for example and in endometriosis but vasculogenesis means the development of new blood vessel but not from a previous blood vessel or a pre-existing blood vessel, and this is commonly seen in embryo development, for example. So in cases of endometriosis, we notice that there is angiogenesis and uh, increased vascularity of the lesions. The increased inflammatory activity in endometriosis due to increased interleukins, uh, monocyte, chemoattractant, protein 1, and increased tumor necrosis factor alpha and TNF beta. All these inflammatory activities in endometriosis will lead to increased prostaglandin production and increased vascular endothelial growth factors, commonly the, uh, uh, as a presentation of the growth factors commonly seen in cases of endometriosis. These factors which are increased prostaglandins and increased growth factors will lead to uh, angiogenesis. So angiogenesis is dependent on the inflammation and increased prostaglandins, increased growth factors. All these factors are responsible for development of uh, new blood vessels from a pre-existing normal blood vessels in the endometrium or in the ovary or whatever, wherever. The angiogenic molecules are many, but the commonly uh, studied in cases of endometriosis is vascular endothelial growth factor. Other factors are studied in different uh, uh, clinical trials and different studies, and all were proved to increase in cases of endometriosis, which means increased vascularity and angiogenesis in endometriotic lesions. And the growth factors are attached to the receptors on the surface of target organs, leading to massive tyrosine kinase signaling cascade, 
with increased vessel permeability, proliferation, migration, and differentiation into mature blood vessels. And these are the steps of angiogenesis in cases of endometriosis. So the vascular endothelial growth factor should fit to a receptor, and these receptors are uh, the significant receptors commonly used in the different studies is vascular endothelial growth factor receptor 2, uh, and this has been studied in different studies as I told you. We should know that the vascular endothelial growth factor is controlled by a gene which is located on the short chromosome uh, number six and consists of eight exons with alternative splitting, forming, uh, splicing, forming a family of proteins. And these are the presentation of the chromosome, short arm of the chromosome number six. Uh, and this is the site for the gene controlling the, vas uh, the vascular theater growth factor. And meta-analysis of different case control studies found there is, that there is a polymorphism of the vascular inferior growth factor gene. But we should know that other growth factors are studied like uh, alpha smooth uh, muscle actin uh, and other factors which were studied in different uh, clinical studies on the endometriosis and in the peritoneal uh, uh, surface in different animal as well as human studies. Now we are sure that there is inflammation, defective innervation, and angiogenesis in cases of endometriosis. How to treat endometriosis based on this uh, pathophysiologic uh, uh, causes of endometriosis or mechanisms of endometriosis. So we can use vascular endothelial growth factors uh, blockers and inhibitors, or we can use other anti-angiogenic agents like progestogens, like uh, statins, like dopamine, like other drugs, particularly some traditional uh, Chinese medications which are used to inhibit expression of vascular and growth factor and HIFR uh, F1A uh, which are uh, angiogenic factors. The pathophysiology of endometriosis mentions that the most important factor in the pathophysiology of endometriosis is estrogen hormone dysregulation and progesterone resistance. So if we use progesterone, this is the basis of uh, uh, using it for treating endometriosis because uh, progesterone resistance can be treated by overdose of progesterone like dienogest, which is the fourth generation pro progestogen, and we can use two milligram daily for treating this case. Other anti-angiogenic agents like anti-vascular growth factor drugs are not commonly used because they are associated with severe toxic effects like vomiting, headache, thromboembolic complications. But we can use dopamine 2 agonist targeting the vascular growth factors, and these are prolactin normalizing drugs like cabergoline, quinagoline, or promocryptin. These drugs actually inhibit the vascular permeability and angiogenic effect of vascular inferior growth factor at non-toxic levels, unlike the anti-vascular inferior growth factors, also significantly decrease expression of vascular inferior growth factor and vascular inferior growth factor receptor 2 in the uh, endometriotic lesions and lead to Downregulation of vascular and growth factor and vascular and growth factor receptor 2, uh, proangiogenic cytokines and plasmogens uh, uh, activity, activator inhibitor 1 within the lesions of endometriosis. So, dopamine agonists by these mechanisms will lead to starvation of the endometriosis by defective 
blood supply to the endometriotic lesion, this will lead to defective uh, uh, nutrition of the endometriotic lesion, and this will lead to shrinkage of the endometriotic lesion. The dopamine agonist effect uh, by the cabagulin will lead to inactivation of the receptors, decreased expression of the vascular therapist factor, and the receptors in the endometriotic lesions. While quinagulid will lead to binding to dopamine receptors and inhibition of vascular therapist factor and vascular therapist factor receptor 2. So, cabergoline will lead to decreased new angiogenesis, and the quinagulid can lead to decreased size of active endometriotic lesions, as proved in one study. The effect of dopamine uh, agonists is at least similar to the gonadotrophin releasing hormone agonist in treating endometriosis in some animal studies. And these are the details of these studies. And the decreased blood vessel formation in endometriosis and eugenesis marker expression and decreased cellular proliferation are the main mechanisms of using dopamine agonists for treating the uh, uh, endometriosis. By this way, they will lead to reduce active endometriotic lesions. Regarding the size of the lesion, it, these drugs will lead to decreased size in a better way than LH releasing hormone in uh, some uh, randomized studies, and the decreased size of the endometriotic lesions on the use of cabergoline uh, resulted in decline of its size by around 65% while LHRH uh, decreased the size by 21 or 22% uh, after three months of therapy uh, by either drug. So the effect of dopamine agonists can be proved by clinical and by laparoscopic confirmation. We constructed a study uh, uh, and it's wait for publication on around 50 on 50 cases uh, aged between 20 to 35 years and they were submitted to diagnostic or operative laparoscopy and minimal or mild endometriosis has been proved and we took biopsies and these biopsies were uh, uh, subjected to histopathologic examination and immunohistochemical examination, histopathologic using H and E uh, staining uh, to see the endometriosis glands and stroma, while the immunohistochemical examination was used to uh, test the uh, activity of the vascular endothelial factor uh, uh, receptors and the vascular endothelial factor in the lesions for proving the angiogenesis in cases of endometriosis. And we prepared sections for the immunohistochemical study, and the sections were uh, studied for vascular inferior growth factor and uh, alpha smooth muscle actin. Uh, and the immunocomplexes were visualized with uh, diaminopenzidine for 10 minutes uh, and placed under a cover slip. These slides were viewed using light microscope, and the immunohistochemical evaluation included cytoplasmic immune staining uh, of both vascular and fibrous factor and smooth muscle acting uh, uh, was semi-quantitatively evaluated according to Remil immunoactive score. And the vascular and therogous factor was expressed on both endometrium and the gland uh, endothelium uh, of the blood vessels and the uh, glandular epithelium, while smooth muscle actin was expressed in the endometrium endothelium of the blood vessels only. We gave our patients capergoline 0.5 milligram twice weekly, at least for three months. After 
three months of treatment. Second, local laparoscopy was performed for those cases, and many cases uh, revealed no lesion of mild or moderate endometriosis as previously seen in the first lock laparoscopy, and biopsy was taken from 19 cases, and these tissues were subjected to histopathologic examination and immunohistochemical examination. Uh, the immunohistochemical examination uh, was uh, alpha smooth muscle actin and vascular anthelogos factor for the blood vessels and vascular anthelogos factor for the endometrium. And the immunostaining with alpha smooth muscle actin molecule marker of blood vessel, vessels within the endometrial specimen revealed uh, negative weak, moderate, or strong cytoplasmic expression, while vascular anterior growth factor of the endometrium and glandular ethereum also revealed the same findings. And we found that the vascular anterior growth factor expression in the ethereum uh, was uh, uh, significantly uh, improved after the treatment, which means that the Angiogenesis uh, uh, decreased after the treatment uh, using uh, cabergoline for three months. Also, the smooth uh, muscle uh, acting uh, showed a significant decrease in the post-treatment uh, specimens strongly uh, if compared to the pre-treatment purposes uh, in the uh, glandular ethereum. So the post-treatment vascular anterior growth factor and alpha smooth muscle actin uh, significantly uh, uh, decreased after treatment by the cabergoline by different statistical analysis. These uh, findings and other studies you put in your mind that angiogenesis has a central role in the pathogenesis of endometriosis and Vascular inferior growth factor and alpha smooth muscle actin are equally effective uh, for indication of the angiogenesis, especially if detected in the blood vessels of the endometriotic lesions. So the prolactin normalizing drugs are promising anti-angiogenic agents for the treating endometriosis. As I told you, prolactin normalizing drugs make starvation of the endometriotic lesions. The advantages of prolactin normalizing drugs are uh, no deleterious effect on fertility suitable for women with associated hyperprolactinemia or galactorea, and they improve the luteal phase effect, inconsistent ovulation and chronic anovulation commonly seen in women with hyperprolactinemia. So these findings put in your mind when you are treating a case of endometriosis that we have inflammation, defective innervation, and angiogenesis in endometriosis. If you concentrate on the, these issues, these pathophysiologic causes of endometriosis, you may achieve success in treating your case. In this lecture, we concentrated on anti-angiogenesis and how to treat angiogenesis also anti-inflammatory and treating defective innervation, particularly in cases with uh, pelvic pain. These are the targets of your treatment uh, of a case of endometriosis. If you like this lecture, please press on the like icon. And if you need more lectures and more videos, you can press on the subscribe and notification icons and you can have a direct contact with me at atif_darush@yahoo.com and